Beats crazy. Rebels arose who were determined to carry the fight to Jerusalem. The Sicari. To the Sicari. Anyone who wasn't fighting the Romans was a collaborator and worthy of death. Many were slain every day. Alright, first and foremost, want to say call hello, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, that's all praises to the Most High God, in the name of His only begotten Son. Alright, so Brother Alazar Ben Loya, I want to tackle this topic of being instant, in season, and out of season. Um, This is a scripture that many Hebrew Israelite groups use um, in reference to the fact that we have to go out week in and week out to preach the word. Um, We now have certain... Uh, opposition rising to that interpretation of this scripture. Uh, many people believe that uh, you don't have to go out week in and week out, that you could do the work periodically, um, seasonally, things like that. So what I want to do, uh, through the spirit and power, of course, of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, is go into the Greek, go into some precepts, go into the Hebrew, and see what the scriptures really say about how often we should be hitting the streets and teaching our people. Okay, um, we're gonna, for, uh, of course, first start here in Second Timothy, the fourth chapter, starting at verse one. I charge thee, uh, I charge thee, therefore, before the Most High and the Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, who shall judge the quick and the dead uh, at His appearing and His kingdom. Preach the word, right? Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. All right, so we're telling us to be instant, in season, out of season. All right. Now, of course, the common a common interpretation of it is that it is in reference to the fact that we gotta go out in all seasons, whether it be winter when it's cold, summer when it's hot. We gotta go out, right? Some people are saying that's not true. Well, let's take a look and examine the Greek, and let's figure this out. Matter of fact, let's go to the word instant real quick. I didn't even think about this. Let's go to the word instant real quick through the spirit. Okay, be present, to stand by or be present. Be present. I would say that be present is likely the, the connotation and the meaning that is, uh, you know, be at hand, be ready. Okay, be ready, right? Be present, right? Okay, let's go to uh, this word, in season. The word in season. Okay, Strong's G, 22, uh, 21-22. Uh, I think it's Eucheros, Eucheros, and it says seasonably opportunely okay so be present present yourself when the time is opportune right now let's go to what's this word out of season here is g 171 and it means unseasonable okay so be able to present yourself for yahweh bashim yahweh shai when it's opportune when it's clement weather and when it's inclement weather okay in inclement times and in opportune times okay we have to present ourselves. So does this mean we got to go out when it's cold outside, when it's brick cold? Yes, it does. Does this mean we got to go out when it's hot outside? Yes, it does. We got to go out and teach and present ourselves for Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, right? When it's seasonable and opportune or when it's inclement, we have to be there. All right? That's a, this is what he's telling us. Paul is charging us before the Most High Yahweh and his son Yahweh Shai to do this. So we must go out. It is very important that we go out. And what do we do when we go out? We reprove, we rebuke, we exhort with all long suffering, all long suffering and doctrine. This is what we do when we go out and teach our people. So this is a charge that the chief apostle Paul gave to the apostles that came thereafter. 
And the term apostle simply means to be sent out. So if you are sent out to teach, you have the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, you've been granted that ability through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh to teach, then this is what you should do. Go out when it's an opportune time or when it's an inclement time. When it's unseasonable, when it's seasonable, and teach this word, right? Preach the word, right? Be instant in season, out of season. Preach in the, in the streets. Okay, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, okay? But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And this is what we see now. We see a lot of people going after, uh, uh, you know, all these wayward doctrines. We see a lot of guys that are rejecting Yahweh Shai in the New Testament. And one of the reasons why they're re rejecting Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Christ, and the New Testament is because things like this are written. The New, the New Testament explicitly requires us to hit the streets and teach. These guys can sit behind a keyboard and sit in the house and not teach in the streets, you know, with their twisted wayward doctrines. You understand what I'm saying? They could be lazy. They could be lackluster. They could settle on their leaves, which the streets should speak against. And even the Old Testament tells us to go out and teach, but they could, you know, they, they like to weasel around that. Okay? Um... Let me continue verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And a lot of our people are turned unto fables. Whether it be fables in regards to the scriptures, fables in regards to these outside religions. A lot of our people are caught up into the fables of some of these black conscious philosophies like Egyptology and things of that nature. Fables our people are turned to. And we got to go out on the streets and let them know that their ears have been turned to fables. This is the importance of going to the streets and declaring this before the black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And also letting the... Um, the heathens know their judgment, you know, and to, you know, proclaim the downfall of Babylon, which is America. Verse 5. But watch thou in all things. Watch, right? Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. So we got to watch, right? We're going to key in on this word watch here in a second. Enduring afflictions. You're not, you don't endure afflictions sitting up in the house not doing anything. You endure the afflictions of dealing with the elements, dealing with scoffers, scorners, things like that, uh, getting ran up on by the police, and things like that. We deal with that. We deal with that when we go out on the streets, right? Do the work of an evangelist, right? What does an evangelist do? Let's find out. Okay. Let's find out what an evangelist. He brings good to An evangelist brings good tidings, okay? The name given to the New Testament heralds of salvation now real quick now let's go into this see i didn't even think about this let's go into the term herald okay i know um we have many uh, uh newspaper publications that are called heralds okay but i don't i'm not exactly sure the etymology so let's go into it right the sound uh the sound uh to sound the praises up right it's a verb it's to sound the praises up to herald something okay so we have to go in and, and, and pronounce this word that's what it's basically saying a herald of the word a herald of the salvation that we receive from Yahweh through Yahweh Shah Mashiach okay his only begotten son in the vessel that he ordained to bring us salvation from this captivity all right so we have to herald these things we have to go and proclaim and give praise to these things all right this is a commandment all right this is a charge that we were given by the Apostle Paul uh, before, you know, Yahweh and Yahweh shot. All right, now let's go here to 2 Ezra real quick. Uh, let's go to 2 Ezra 2 and 42 to 48. I, uh, I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people who I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. And in the midst of them there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads he set crowns and, ha and was more exalted. Which I marveled at greatly, right? So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, These be they that put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal, and have confessed the name of Yahweh. Now are they crowned and receive palms. Then said I unto the angel, What young person is it that crowneth them and giveth uh, them palms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, It is the son of the Most High, right? Which is Yahweh Shai, right? Whom they have confessed in the world. So the people who are going to be the elect. Who are going to receive deliverance from the most high. Are those that confess him and his son. 
in the world. How do we do that? By going out to the streets and heralding it, being instant in season and out of season for Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of Yahweh. Okay? We're standing stiffly in the name of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh All right? We're standing stiffly. How do we do that? By going to the highways and byways and proclaiming this truth and teaching this word in season and out of season, week in and week out. Those are they who are going to be the elect and receive this salvation from Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Those that stand stiffly for his name. Verse 48. Then the angel said unto me, Go thy way and tell my people what manner of things and how great wonders of the Lord thy God thou hast seen. It. So we are commanded to do what? Go and tell our people. How do we tell our people? When we go into the chief places of concourse and cry aloud and spare not. In those things, and tell them of this great salvation is coming, and tell them of the condemnation that's coming to all those that don't get on board and receive this great salvation through the spirit of power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. Let's go to the book of Luke now. Okay, we're gonna key in on something here. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when He cometh, shall find watching. Remember a second ago when we were in uh, Second Timothy four, I uh, mentioned the word watch. Okay, we're going to key in on that here in a second. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. So it says, the servant that when the Lord cometh, he shall find watching, okay, and expecting the coming of the Lord. Now let's go into this word. It's Strong's G 1127, and it means to watch, all right? Give strict attention to, be cautious, be active. We have to actively be watching and giving strict attention to this truth, right? How do we do that? So we got to be active. Sitting at the crib isn't being active. That's being inactive, all right? First Thessalonians 5 and 2. Uh, for, uh, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So the day of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is coming as a thief in the night. But those who are diligently and actively watching... For this day to come, are not going to be taken by surprise when it in fact comes. Now, this is a, a habit, uh, the book of Habakkuk, the second chapter, the first verse. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall be answered and what I shall answer when I am reproved. So, a watch, all right, is being commanded. We got to stand upon our watch. We got to actively and diligently watch and pay close attention and be cautious. Okay, to be cautious, right? Let's go into this word watch in the Hebrew. Strong's H4931, right? And it's uh, Mashamrath. Mashamrath, I believe is how you say it. Mashamrath. Okay, and it means to guard. All right, charge, function, obligation, service, watch. We are obligated to serve the Lord by going out on the streets, right, and preaching and teaching His word. And we act as a guard unto our people when we warn them of coming dangers, and we're watching out for their souls. You see that? This one word just plainly illustrated doing the work. And we got to stand upon our watch. You don't stand upon your watch when you go out for a couple weeks, stop doing it for months and years, then start doing it again. That's not standing upon your watch. That's not doing as Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai commanded you. Again, we got to be a guard unto our people by warning them of the coming danger, which is this destruction, which they, which way, which they will fall victim of if they don't repent. Okay? We are charged to be instant in season and out of season, as we read in 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, when Paul, the chief apostle, charged all those that follow uh, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah to do so. Okay? We have that obligation to do the service of preaching and teaching our people that the Most High God has ordained us to do. That is our watch. That's the importance of it, right? Now let's go to this word set in the Hebrew, it's Strong's H. 3320 and it's Yatazab. Yatazab. And it means to place, to set, to stand, set or station oneself, present oneself. Now again, we went back where uh uh which word was it that was present real quick? Uh the instant. When this word instant in the Greek here, it mean it means basically to uh, be present, to present oneself, right? 
Now, when we go back here into Strong's H3320, Yatazaba means to place, set, stand, set, or station oneself, present oneself. So how do we present ourselves? By going out into the streets, making our bodies a living sacrifice for Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. This is how we present ourselves, week in and week out. We got to do it. We don't just do it for a little bit and take some time off. That's wicked, man. That's going against the scriptures. That's not standing upon your watch. That's not doing as you were told. We are set or placed in a station. We have an office. We have an obligation of service to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And, and, and the chief thing that we're obligated to do is go out on that street corner and teach our people this truth. Teach them who they are. Let them know this kingdom is coming. Tell them they need to repent. I mean, this yeah, the kingdom, you know, our kingdom is coming. And let them know they need to repent or they're going to fall with this kingdom, with the white man's wicked kingdom. Okay? That is our duty. All right? This is our station, them corners, man. All right? Amongst other things, but chiefly it all starts with going out on them streets and teaching this word. Okay? Presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. When it says present oneself, present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Okay? All right? This is uh, Psalms 40 and 9. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. So we are supposed to preach righteousness in the congregation. The congregation is dealing with an assembly of our people. When we go out on the streets in the areas where our people populate, we're telling our people. That's us preaching the righteousness in that great congregation. We're not supposed to refrain our lips. So if you stop teaching for months, weeks, you know what I'm saying, years, you are refraining your lips. That's wicked. Okay, verse 10. I have not hid thy righteousness. You are hiding thy righteousness when you don't go out here and do what we're supposed to do. Serve our op, uh, our office, right? Fulfill our obligation to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. We got to go out to the streets, present our bodies as living sacrifices, and declare the faithfulness and the salvation and the righteousness of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. When you don't go out to the streets and teach our people the truth, you are concealing the loving kindness, the truth, uh, Salah, you are concealing the loving kindness and the truth of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Okay? And we're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to openly declare it. We're supposed to herald the loving kindness and the truth of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Teach our people who we are. Let them know we got to follow the laws. Let them know this kingdom is going down. Make sure they never forget and identify who their enemy is. We have to do these things. These are things that we are commanded and instructed to do. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So stop making excuses. Don't try to twist the meaning of in season, out of season. We got to go out here and we got to preach this word. Period. Stop making excuses, man. Get out on them streets and preach the word. But don't do it prematurely. Don't do it before you're ready. Eat that roll. Get a solid foundation before you do it. But some of you guys, y'all know better. Y'all are well, uh, 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 more than able to go out here and do this work. And y'all making excuses. Get out here and do this work, man. Okay, this is Psalm 71 and 15. My mouth shall shoot forth thy righteousness, right? And thy salvation all the day. So we're supposed to go out here all day long, really, and teach and preach the righteousness and the salvation of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. For I know not the numbers thereof. Verse 16. I will go in the strength of the Lord God, right? Yahweh, right? I will make mention of thy righteousness, right? So we're gonna we we are strengthened by Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai when we go out here and teach his word and make mention of his righteousness, okay? Even of thine only. But what happens? What happens is when you guys bullshit and you don't want to go out here to these streets and you make excuses or you want to just be seasonal prophets, what you're doing is not being strengthened by Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai to make mention of his righteousness. And you need to check and examine yourself and stop being lazy and stop getting settled on your leads because that's something that is condemned by Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Verse 17. O God, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. We're supposed to declare the wondrous works of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. How you doing that sitting in your damn room? Doing nothing. We got to get out here to these streets and declare these wondrous works. Declare the righteousness and the salvation of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And the mercies that will have upon our people if we merely re repent and seek him ten times more. It's Mark 16 and 15. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We supposed to be going out here and preaching this gospel. Why aren't you doing it? Why are you making excuses? Why are you so full of crap, man? Get out here and preach this gospel. Yahweh Shai told us. This is Ezekiel 13 and 5. Ye have not gone up into the gaps. Neither have thee made up. Uh, neither. Uh, Salah. Neither made up the hedge 
for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. When it's talking about the gaps and the hedges, it's talking about the breaches, right? Back in the ancient days, we had walls, all right, that guarded our cities, okay? And, and, and a gap in the wall would be like a breach, a place where the wall was broken and, and um, basically was a weak point that somebody could easily invade and get into and attack of our cities. In a spiritual sense, this represents where our people are congregating who are ignorant to who they are. That's us going up to the gaps and trying to close the breaches through the spirit and the power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai by teaching our people who they are because our people are weak and open for attack when they are gapped and they are disconnected from Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. So that's why it's important that we go into the streets and try to help spiritually close the breaches that are amongst our people. Okay? Because the day of battle was drawn nigh. This is John 17 and 18. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. So Yahweh Shai was sent into the world by the Most High Yahweh, and we were sent into the world by Yahweh Shai. Why are you not doing what you're supposed to be doing? Why are you not going as you were sent? Okay? As an apostle. Right? This is Acts 16 and 5. And so were the churches established in faith and increased in number daily. So in the ancient times, during the time of Acts, that teaching was going on daily. And fruit was being brought in daily to these churches. Okay? So really, we should be doing the work every day, but we understand through the nature of this captivity that that is a challenge. Okay? But every week, that is a very reasonable request and service for a brother to fulfill. Okay? This is Acts 17 and 17. Therefore, disputed he in the synagogues with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with them. So Paul was daily disputing in the marketplace, okay? When we go out to these streets, usually the places where brothers set up camps are very near to prominent shopping areas. That's disputing in the marketplace. Paul did this daily. So is it that much to ask that you go out on the streets every week unless it's a damn blizzard or a hurricane going on? Is that so much to ask? We got to do this work, man. Stop making excuses. Get your ass right. All right? Or, or deal with the consequences. And with that, again, call Halal Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai and Shalom.